knowing God. The key to gaining momentum for mounting up. And I want to begin on the dimension of knowing God. Which I am calling the fatherhood of God. The fatherhood of God. The fatherhood of God. Our key scripture is Luke 11, 1 to 2. Luke chapter number 11 verse number 1 to 2. The scripture says, Now it came to pass, as he was praying in a certain place, when he sees that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. As John taught his disciples. Verse number two. When you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I'm speaking about knowing God. And especially in the dimension of God as a father. I'm going to make some three major statements as I long, go along. But let me just do a bit of introduction to this. And let you know that it is God's desire that we may know him. Amen. Amen. For to know him is eternal life. Our true knowledge about God becomes the genesis of life. Becomes the genesis of life. For when we know God, it unlocks the power of resurrection. And Jesus speaking in John 17, 3 says, And this is eternal life. That we know you, the only true God. And Jesus Christ whom you have sent. He was a true knowledge about God. He was a true knowledge about Jesus Christ. Qualifies for eternal life. In Colossians chapter number 1 and verses number 10. It is a prayer of Paul. That we may walk walk of the Lord. We are preaching unto him. Being fruitful in every good work. And increasing in the knowledge of God. Philippians 3 verse number 10 is the cry. The cry of Apostle Paul. He was not a novice in the things of God. But there was a hunger and a desire that captured his spirit Man. He cried and said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. And in knowing him, I can also fellowship in his suffering and I also be conformed in his death. When I know God, there is no extent I cannot go to, there is nothing that I cannot bear in my body. When I know God, there is no place that I cannot withstand. When I know God, there is no valley that I cannot traverse. All the time may know him. And the power that raised up Jesus from the dead. The knowledge about God can be attained in a more clear way 
and God has made provision that we can know him by what we call divine encounters experiences with God this experiences are not for the multitude it is a personal encounter with God people like Moses got to know God by encounters people like Paul got to know God by encounters Gideon had an encounter with an angel I want to declare that the days of encounter never ended with Apostle Paul in our day and our season may the Lord introduce himself to you even by the reason of divine encounter it is one thing to hear about somebody but it is another thing to meet somebody it is one thing to know that there is a city called Nairobi it is another thing to go into Nairobi I pray that you will say like Job I used to hear about you oh God but now I have seen you because I have had an encounter with you it is not about what my mother told me it is not what about what my pastor told me it is not about the stories in my Sunday school class I have, a, I have had a personal encounter I have met God in my generation I have met God personally God has made a provision that we can get to know him so we through encounters God can also be known through liberation through liberation God can reveal himself even unto us in the name of Jesus let me make the first statement which I would want you to write unless this generation has a genuine encounter with God we are bound to live a lie and just play religion and less this generation has a genuine encounter with God we are bound to live a lie and just play religion may the God of heaven have mercy upon us we don't want just to pray religion we want to live life as God ordained the Bible gives us an example in Romans 1.21 it says there were people that knew God canary there were people that knew God historically not because they had had an encounter with God the Bible says in Romans 1.21 although they knew God they did not glorify him as God nor were they thankful but they became futile in their thoughts and their foolish hearts were darkened yes they knew God but not intimately not genuinely they played religion I want to let you know as I speak as a servant of God this generation unless we get an encounter with God religion shall be the end product of our lives we will know God canary and we will not acknowledge him I want to say to us today it is dangerous to lay claim that we know God yet we have no proof or evidence of our faith we need a prover we need a token which will testify which will testify we know God we know God I pray that in this day that as you pursue to know God by encounter and by elaboration that God will deposit in you the treasures of heaven which will be a testament that you have known God you have met God when 
when Jacob met God, Jacob he never God. went on the same. He changed even his name. He changed his character. He changed his perspective. He had a proof. He had an experience with God. I want to ask you today, what is in your life? What is in your life? There is a proof that you have known God. It's not enough to be called a Christian. It's not enough to be a church goer. It's not enough to serve in the church. It is not enough to give your tithe. I want to come out of the presence of God with an aura, with a smell that I had met God. I want to come out with a glory that I met God. I want to come out with a testament that I've been to the sacred place and I have transacted some business with the God Almighty. It is not that I've just been into church, but there is something that is evident in my life that I've been with God. God said to Moses, go and tell him, God has sent him. And Moses said, God, I can't go without a testament. Alive with no proof that we have ever known God is a life of conformity and defeat. We must bring this mockery from the world to the church. The world is standing like Penina in the days of Hannah. The world is standing like Penina in the day of Hannah. Bringing mockery and ridicule to the children of God. But I sense in the spirit there is a conception of a somebody called Samuel. And soon you are going to silence Penina by reason of a proof that you serve a living God. Do I have people that are hungry for a test do I have people that are hungry for a proof? Do I have people that are hungry for evidence that will silence the world? Lift up your hand and say, Oh Lord, by reason of encounter, deposit in my life a testament, oh God, that is going to bring to an end the mockery and the ridicule of the peninas of the world in the mighty name. Name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want to say to us, church, unless we have a personal encounter with God, our churches are going to be filled with a mixed multitude. And we are going to miss God's agenda with us in our generation. Unless we have a personal encounter with God, we become compromisers and conformers instead of transformers. Unless we get an encounter with God, we will be trained of our boldness to witness for Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But by resolution of knowing God, may there be a restoration of a passion and a zeal for winning souls. May there be a passion and a a desire for holiness. I want to say to you, church, God has not changed his position. There is no shortcut into a holy marriage. The altar is the way to the holy marriage. I pray that this day in the name of Jesus, Lord, may you deliver me as your servant. 
and deliver the congregation that I pastor from being a multitude of people that is mixed standing before you. For as Joshua said, for how long are you going to stand between two opinions? If God be God, serve him. If Baal be Baal, serve him. Time has come for us to draw the thin line. Utasimama katikati ya chaguo mbili hadilini. Ikiwa mungu ni mungu, basi mtumikie. The Bible talks about Isaiah. In those days, the Bible tells us that Isaiah, the glory of the Lord, appeared after the death of King Uzziah. And God is just about to introduce himself. And Isaiah says when King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord lifted up. Highly lifted up and the train of his glory filled the temple. And the Bible says, and when I looked up to the glory, the Lord introduced himself to me. And I saw a reflection of myself in God. And I realized, oh, I am a man of unclean lips. And the, I live among the people that are unclean. And after that I heard a voice from heaven saying who shall go for us and because I had an experience with God I was confidently able to respond yes I will go I want to let you know the beginning and the genesis of boldness of serving God is a personal encounter with him because it reveals who we are at the moment and project Protect us on who we are going to be in the future. As you encounter God in this season, may you see yourself and reflect his glory and be ready for the assignment. Blessed be God. Let us look at this dimension of God as a father. In Luke 11 and verse number 1 to 2, the disciples of Jesus asked them to teach them how to pray. They wanted to know how to approach God. They wanted to be effective as Jesus was. And he said when you start to pray begin like this. Our Father in heaven. Our Father who is in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Our Father who is that in heaven. That word Abba. That word Father. Baba. Jesus was telling them when you begin pray. Yes, sala. Pray as following. Msali jinsi hii. Abba Father. Abba Baba. Abba Father. Abba Baba. Abba is the word, the Greek word for father. Abba ndilo neno la kiunani inayomanisha baba. And also the Hebrew word for the same. Na pia neno la kiibrania inayomanisha hivyo. And Abba or father is a symbol of intimacy and obedience. Abba ama baba ni ishara ya uandani na pia utiifu. I want to make it categorical today. Nataka ni ilete kwa kusisitiza leo. That daddy is not the same as father. Ya kumba, daddy sio kama kusema baba. I've come to understand by the reason of the spirit that the word daddy is an exploitative term. Nimekuja kuelewa ya kumba hili neno daddy ni neno la utumizi mbaya. When people call you daddy, there is something they were hiding or there is something they want to get from you. Watu wanapo kuita daddy, kuna kitu wanaficha ama kuna jambo wanataka kupata kutoka kwa kwa. Jesus did not introduce his father as daddy. Yesu haku tambulisha baba yake kama daddy. He introduced him as Abba. Alimtambua kama baba. And he says when you want to go to him. Akasema mtakapo taka kuenda kwa kwa. It is good for you to know his credentials. Ni viema muelewe wa sifu wake. Because in understanding his credentials. Unapoelewa wa sifu wake. You will be able to expose yourself to the benefit of his who he is. Utaweza kujiweka wazi kupata faida ya yule alia. I want to give you an example 
example. It is one thing to go to the president and call him by his name. And also, it is a different thing to go to him and call him by his title. When you go and call him by his name, you are limited in terms of benefits. If you go and call him by his name, the power and the grace and the office vested on him will not be released upon your life. But when you go to him and call him, your excellence even before you put his name behind there you have already exposed him yourself to the possibilities that comes by that title are you carrying me in church when you call him by his excellence it shows you have a full understanding of who he is and that exposes you to the possibilities that comes by that name in understanding God as a father it exposes you to the possibilities of him to give you the intimacy you need and also it demands a certain degree of responsibility from you we are living in days when people need God's mercy. But they don't want to know him as Abba Father. When you know God as a Father, you want the goodness in him. But you are placing a demand on yourself that I am responsible to obedience. You don't want him to be a daddy who puts food on your table puts sugar on your tea clothes your body but you forget that there is a dimension of understanding that you need there is a responsibility demanded from you hear me church today we must know God as Abba Further. It is not about exploiting him. Unless we know him. Unless we know him as father. We are bound of using God to go up as a land. And when we are up there, we say, God, we are finished with you. We will see you when we are coming down. Oh Lord, we will need you when we are down again. God is not a lander to take you up only. And when you are up there, Alafu kisha fika juu, now you are earning some good money. Sasa umepata pesa nzuri, you're driving big. And you say, here I am, Lord. Alafu nasema, buwana, ndiyo mimi hapa. I'll see you next week when I need money. Tutaonana, wiki jayo, wakati nitaitaji pesa. God is not a daddy, he is a father. Mungu siyo daddy, mungu ni baba. A father is a source of life and discipline. Baba ni chanzi cha uzima pia ni thamu. He doesn't only provide but he demands responsibility. Yeye huwa hatutuwali tu lakini pia anadai ya kwamba tuwajibike. Please church get that. I can see that on my knees. Kanisa tafadhali pata hii maana naweza kuisema nikiwa nimepiga magoti. God is a further. Mungu ni baba. He is not only a source. Yeye siyo chanzi tu of life and other goodies. Ya uzima na vipawa zingine nzuri. He is also a source of discipline. Yeye pia ni chanzi cha nidhamu. God is a father. Mungu ni baba. Now as a father he is also a sustainer.
maintainer and a protector. Na kiwa baba pia yeye hutudumisha na pia kulinda. It is rather unfortunate. Sasa ni jambo la kusikitisha that many of us have not been able to reconcile. Ya kwamba wengi wetu hatujaweza kuambatanisha. The reality of God as a father. Ukweli wa baba aki wa Mungu I understand that we come from various and different and diverse environmental backgrounds. Naelewa ya kwamba tunatoka katika misingi tofauti na misingi mbalimbali. We come from various and diverse social backgrounds. Tunatoka katika misingi za kiujumuia mbalimbali. And to a great extent our very impression or image about a father has been distorted by the societal standards. Na kiwango kikuu picha yetu ya baba imeharibiwa na viwango na vipimo vya jamii yetu but i pray that this morning through the preaching of the word of god naomba asubuhi ya leo kupitia kwa mahubiri ya neno la mungu we will have an appropriate understanding about a father ya kwamba tutakuwa na ufahamu nzuri kumhusu baba